So to work out the period of that circular motion, we know that for constant speed, that speed equals distance over time, that means that time, or period t, would equal distance over speed. The distance is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r, and v is our speed. So now substituting in for r, we have that the period is 2 pi mv over qbv. The v's cancel. So now we just have that the period t equals 2 pi m over q times b. All particle accelerators use electric fields to accelerate the particles. So they, these only work on charged particles. Now you can have linear accelerators that just go in a straight line, but cyclotrons and synchrotrons are accelerators that use magnetic fields to steer the particles in circles. The reason for doing this is so that the particle spends as much time as possible within the field so that it can continue to be accelerated. The Large Hadron Collider is probably the best known example of a synchrotron. Another technology that uses these equations is the mass spectrometer. There, an ion with a known charge is fired into a chamber with a magnetic field. Ions with different masses will have different radii of curvature, and so they end up at different positions on the detector. So the rules I've shown you are always worked out for positive charge. For negative, you just have to remember that the force will act in the opposite direction to a positive charge. So you can see here the track of one positron and two electrons in a uniform magnetic field. You can see that the positron got exactly the opposite force to the electron, and so it curved in the opposite direction. But why would the other electron have been only barely deflected? Think about the equation. B is constant here. They all have the same charge, Q. We're assuming that the angle theta is the same for all of them. So the only difference could be the speed. So I want you to quickly answer, will the faster electron be deflected more or less than the slower electron?